All right, so that's how you get your bacteria. Now let's move on to how you can protect your bacterial, uh, your colonies. Um, the, the composition of the diet affects the diversity of the gut bacteria and its composition um, uh, itself. Microflora thrives on, thrives on partially digested food rem remnants. So if you want to feed the um, beneficial bacteria, they really like carbohydrate and fiber. They require 250 calories worth of, bac of uh, carbohydrate every day. Um, Changes in the ratio of beneficial to bad bacteria, pathogenic bacteria, start within two weeks of changing your diet one direction or the other. So if you change your diet in favor of eating a more plant-based diet, within a couple weeks you start to see shifts. If you decide after leaving here you're going to go home and eat cheeseburgers and french fries, within a couple weeks you're going to see some negative changes in your gut microbiome. Um, fiber and indigestible sugars provide food for the beneficial bacteria, and there's only two places you can get this stuff, and that is breast milk and carbohydrate uh, plant foods. Um, vegetarians have higher counts of beneficial bacteria than non-vegetarians, and um, the guts of Africans who eat high-fiber diets are quite different than the guts of Europeans, for example, who eat high-fat diets. Animal foods, and you heard Dr. Esselstyn talk about this both last night and during his lecture, can injure blood vessels via interaction with the gut microbiome. So intestinal bacteria metabolize lecithin and carnitine from animal foods and turn it into a substance called TMAO. It promotes vascular injury. Increased levels of plasma TMAO were associated with a two and a half uh, times increased risk of cardiovascular events, even after adjustment for other risk factors like hypertension and smoking. People who consume a plant-based diet manufacture TMAO, even if they go crazy and eat steaks and take carnitine supplements. So if I were to go out to dinner tonight and eat a great big juicy steak, I still don't produce TMAO because I don't have the bacteria in my gut that will produce it. But guess what? If I just keep eating steak and cheese and chicken breast and all that sort of thing within a couple of weeks, my bacterial colonies will start to respond and I will have the necessary bacteria to injure my endothelial tissue with um, this TMAO. Um, very seldom do you see in the medical literature comparisons of vegans, legitimate comparisons of vegans, and one of the reasons is it's hard to find vegans to do a study with because so many vegans um, have not, they've stopped eating animal foods, but they're not necessarily eating an optimal diet. And that's one of the things we have a little bit of work to do, you know. Uh, and I did this, by the way, in the beginning. When I first changed my diet and, and started eating a, a, a plant-based diet, uh, I think I gained 10 pounds. And the reason was I was eating vegan Oreos, and vegan chicken nuggets, and vegan this and vegan that, and um, I had just managed to duplicate my terrible dietary pattern at Whole Foods, okay? Well, the first thing was that if I kept going that way, I was gonna have to put a mortgage on my house because it's ridiculously expensive to eat this way, but I wasn't seeing the health changes. So anyway, once in a while, you'll see a study that actually compares healthy vegans to others, and this was a study of Slovenian vegans. Um, they had more beneficial bacteria in their microbiome, uh, which were involved in lowering inflammation. And these are the bacteria that thrive on fiber. Fecal samples from vegans have lower pH than controls. Remember that low pH environment is what makes the pathogens really nervous and difficult to survive. It leads to, um, uh, and one example is like E. coli. Um, for some reason, we all have some of these pathogenic bacteria in our guts, a little bit of E. coli, a little bit of C. diff, but when those populations are kept really low, they don't cause problems. So the example I always use for people is um, how many people dust the furniture in their house? And then even after you dust it, if you look at it just right in the sun, there's still a little bit of dust. Okay, so no matter how much you dust, there's a little bit of dust, but if you stop dusting at all, you end up having to move out of your house, right? So, so you're always gonna have a little bit of dust in your house, and you're always gonna have a little bit of pathogens in your gut. You just wanna keep the population under control. And I like this quote from the study. The vegan gut prof profile appears to be unique in several characteristics, including a reduced abundance of pathobionts and a greater abundance of protective species. Reduced levels of inflammation may be the key feature linking the vegan gut microbiota with protective health benefits. All right, it doesn't get much more clear than that. All right. So um, it's important to protect your gut bacteria. Gut health is related to everything else. And so um, we could spend all day on diseases related to the gut. Here are some of the common ones, and this is why I have like 25 or 30 hours of lectures, but uh, bad breath, skin disorders, constipation, iron deficiency, reflux, asthma. People don't usually link asthma as being a gut disease, but it is related to gut health. Failure to thrive, depression, anxiety. You can see the list here. It's pretty big.